at large. Okay. The humanity is ready. We can go ahead. Hare Krishna, everyone. Good morning. We'll start with uh, Mangala Charan. <clears throat> O Magyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamaya Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapada Kamala Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajata Sahagana Raguna Tambitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Shri Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shri Mathe Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi, Paschatya Deshatarine, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhara, Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Ram Rama Rama Hare Hare hmm. We are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 10, uh, chapter 22, uh, verses 18 to 19. And we are in the pastime of Krishna stealing the clothes of the gopis. Um, okay, so I will read the Sanskrit and then the translation and then the purports. And then we'll speak about it a bit. So it says, Bhagavan Ahata Vikshaya Shudha Bhava Prasadita Skandhe Nidhaya Vasamsi Prita Provacha Sasmitam. The translation says When the Supreme Lord saw how the gopis were struck with embarrassment, he was satisfied by their pure loving affection. Putting their clothes on his shoulder, the Lord smiled and spoke to them with affection. Uh, the purport by Srila Prabhupada, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada comments, the gopis' simple presentation was so pure that Lord Krishna immediately became pleased with them. All the unmarried gopis who prayed to Katyayani to have Krishna as their husband were thus satisfied. A woman cannot be naked before any male except her husband. The unmarried gopis desired Krishna as their husband, and he fulfilled their desire in this way. 
For aristocratic girls like the gopis, standing naked before a young boy was worse than death. And yet, they decided to give up everything for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. He wanted to see the power of their love for him, and he was completely satisfied by their unalloyed devotion. Verse 19. Let's see. I don't know the verse for this. So please, not the verse, the meter for this verse. So please forgive me if I butcher this. Maybe it's this. Maybe it's this. Yuyam vivastra yadapodrita vrata. Maybe. Vyaga hataita tadu deva helanam. Badvagyalim murdi apanutaye masa. Kritva namodho vasanam pragrityatam. Okay, translation. Lord Krishna said, you girls bathe naked while executing your vow. And this is, and that is certainly an offense against the demigods. To counteract your sin, you should offer obeisances while placing your jointed palms above your heads. Then you should take back your lower garments. The purport. Krishna wanted to see the full surrender of the gopis, and thus he ordered them to offer obeisances with their palms joined above their heads. In other words, the gopis could no longer cover their bodies. We should not foolishly think that Lord Krishna is an ordinary lusty boy enjoying the naked beauty of the gopis. Krishna is the supreme, absolute truth, and he was acting to fulfill the loving desire of the young cowherd girls of Vrindavan. In this world, we would certainly become lusty in a situation like this. But to compare ourselves to God is a great offense. And because of this offense, we will not be able to understand Krishna's transcendental position. For we will wrongly take him to be materially conditioned like ourselves. To lose transcendental sight of Krishna is certainly a great disaster for one trying to relish the bliss of the absolute truth mm. and i'll just read the two verses together so we get them together one more time so this 1819 says when the supreme lord saw how the gopis were struck with embarrassment he was satisfied by their pure loving affection putting their clothes on his shoulder the lord smiled and spoke to them with affection lord krishna said you girls bathe naked while executing your vow. And that is certainly an offense against the demigods. To counteract your sin, you should offer obeisances while placing your jointed palms above your heads. Then you should take back your lower garments. Okay. So first of all, thank you, um, everyone, for being here. Um, really, truly seeking the, the blessings and the guidance of... Um, all senior devotees here, all Srila Prabhupada disciples here, because this is quite a, you know, it's quite a section of the Bhagavatam, especially of Krishna Lila. And um, one should not speak too flippantly about these kinds of things. And even the second purport, um, disciples of Srila Prabhupada are mentioning, you know, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, there's a mention in a sense of we shouldn't take these things to um, um, like lightly, right? So it is mentioned um, that we should not compare ourselves to God because this is a great offense and we should not wrongly take Krishna. And I don't think that these things are lost on our ears, actually, because I think a lot of the times we think, oh, well, we're devotees and, you know, we don't, we get it, you know, we understand Krishna is God. Um, however, I think uh, maybe at one point in our life, um, when we were coming to Krishna consciousness, I always like to think back to that time of my life, like when I was coming to Krishna consciousness, what was my mindset then? How was I approaching these things then? I recently was hanging out with someone um, that um, came to the India pilgrimage with us and they're very new to bhakti. And I always really like seeing kind of like through the eyes of someone who's very new to bhakti because I've been in this for a while now and you know, you forget that newness in a sense. 
And it was so innocent. They were saying something along the lines of like, I don't know. They were speaking about Sha- Shaivism and Shiva and this and like, you know, illicit sex, whatever. We don't need to get into that. But they were saying something very like innocent in a sense of just like, well, Shiva had a bunch of wives, didn't he? And like, so isn't it okay? Like, can I like, you know, can I be like this because Shiva's like this? And it was sweet because I could tell, I know the person, they're very sincere. And so I could tell that that's innocence that they were asking the question in. So I don't think that this point is, is should be lost on us, that we have to remember that these pastimes are something much, much, much deeper um, than, you know, Krishna just having a good time or like having fun. And rather in the first purport, we're told that um, by Srila Prabhupada, that this is actually Krishna's, um, this is actually Krishna's pastime to um, fulfill the desires of the gopis because they, w- they were praying to Katyayani to have Krishna as their husband. And I think the biggest um, way that we understand this, that we've come to understand, that I've heard, that we've come to understand this pastime, is that the gopis, and basically Krishna is asking the gopis um, to stand, to, to bear themselves, to bear themselves completely to Krishna. Right? It is an act of true surrender. You wanted me as your husband, then step out of the water, you know, and bear yourself to me. And so we can see the literal action that is happening here. However, we can't compare ourselves to the gopis. And therefore, from a more figurative understanding, what is being asked of us or what we can gain from these kinds of verses is that bearing ourselves to Krishna that bearing of ourself, our surrender, our full surrender, right, Um, to Krishna, what does that look like? Are we ready to, um, you know, um, bear all the bad things, all the good things, so that Krishna can see us as we are? And this is a really interesting point, and the main point that I'd like to focus on today, because you know, I think that, um, well, first of all, let me start from a from a Shastric perspective, and then I'll go on kind of to my more, um, the way that I've just been processing this idea. Uh, from a Shastric perspective, I mentioned this verse quite a lot, um, because it's it's a very fundamental verse, and I, I really like this verse. It's in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 11, chapter 20, and I can't remember the verses right now, like which numbers they are off the top of my head. But it says, Bayam dvitiya binabesha tashyat, isha da petasya vipariyaryo smriti, tan maya yato buddha abhajit tam, bhaktiyai kayesham gurudeva tatma. Right? So this verse is explaining the main, the main, the main um, problem of material existence. Right. The main problem of material existence is that we are turning away from Krishna. Right. We are turning away from Krishna and we become filled with fear when we turn away from Krishna. Bhayam. Right. We become absorbed with the material energy and we start to identify with material things and we forget our true nature. And in this turning away from Krishna, right? Oftentimes we hear this referred as Bahir Mukha. Um, We become afraid. We become afraid because we become really attached to this body, this mind, this identity, all of the identities. Oh, 237. Thank you, Krishna Daya Prabhu, not 20. (laughs) We become attached to material things. We become absorbed with our identities. And when we become absorbed in that which is not Krishna, then we become extremely forgetful of him. And we, what to say of bearing ourselves completely to Krishna, like the gopis in this in this scenario, we're not bearing anything to Krishna because we're absorbed completely over here on the other side. We're, we're bearing ourselves to all this other stuff, right? 
And so I think that that's an important point to start off on, that this is the main problem of material existence, of being a conditioned jiva in this material body, that we are not, not only are we not turning to Krishna, not only are we not bearing ourselves to Krishna, but we might not even be turning to him, right? And so that is something that requires individual, um, individual, um, what's the word I'm looking for? An individual reckoning, like each of us are responsible for that. And no one is going to do it for us, actually. And the reason I mentioned that is because there are so many, and this is something, now I'll move on to the next point. This is something I've been sitting with. There are so many aspects of the self. There are so many aspects of the ego that require some, what's the word I'm looking for? Reckoning is like a big word. Um, but there are so many aspects of the ego that require um purification that's a great word right because obviously we can understand from a bigger perspective yes i need to become purified i need to you know be at this higher level functioning on my highest self level so that i can you know really really have taste for the holy name i can really really experience the real you know name of krishna but to get to that point, right, the anartha nivritti, let's call it, to get to that point, uh, it requires a lot of coming to terms with certain aspects of ourself. And that takes a lot of time. And something I've been really thinking about is that it takes a lot of time and it takes like, it's like an individual, you know, when you like sign up for these like cleanses or whatever, and it's like, here's your individualized packet. It's like, we each need one of those individualized packets. It's not a cookie cutter thing. You know, yes, we all have the chanting of the holy names, but our journey to arrive to that really sincere chanting where we can bear ourselves to the name, where we can bear ourselves to Krishna, that's going to look different for each and every one of us. Yes. So um, I was in Puerto Rico recently with Janavi. We were having a, a retreat, a bhakti retreat, and it was really, really beautiful. But we we started every morning. Um, chanting the Shikshastakam and chanting Japa before we went into yoga and RT and things like this. And I'd never heard this translation of the Shikshastakam before. It's by um, Swami Sridhar Swami. And I never, I never heard this translation and it really, really, really hit me, especially one line, but I will read the whole translation of the first verse only of the Shikshastakam because it's extremely beautiful. I'd never heard it put this way. And it, it, it gave me a different understanding. And I think it connects to today's class, especially to this point. Remember where we're coming from, turning away from Krishna, turning towards Krishna. When we turn away from Krishna, we're in fear, we're absorbed with material life. When we turn towards Krishna, that is the first step in being able to fully bear ourselves to him. Okay, so this is the first verse of the Shikshastakam, and I'll just read the English translation by Sridhar Swami. So he says, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, the holy name of Krishna cleanses the mirror of the heart and extinguishes the fire of misery in the forest of birth and death. As the evening lotus blooms in the moon's cooling rays, the heart begins to blossom in the nectar of the name. And at last, the soul awakens to its real inner treasure, a life of love with Krishna. Again and again, tasting nectar, the soul dives and surfaces in the ever-increasing ocean of ecstatic joy. All phases of the self of which we may conceive are fully satisfied and purified and at last conquered by the all-auspicious influence of the holy name of Krishna. Such a beautiful translation of the Shikshastakam. And the, the specific line, we could 
get into a whole tangent about just how beautiful each line is, but we're not going to do that. A specific line, which I really appreciated and I think connects to um, today's verses, is this last line. All phases of the self of which we may conceive are fully satisfied and purified. And at last conquered by the all auspicious influence of the holy name of Krishna. And I really like this all phases of the self. I actually was having a lot of conversations about this with um, Janavi and Kaylee. Some of you know Kaylee and his music. He's such a sweet soul, very sincere. Um, but all phases of the self in terms of the ego, in terms of the purification that we need to go through to be able to really stand before Krishna. Um, and remember this first verse of the Shikshastakam is explaining the effects of chanting the holy name, right? And then we get into the second verse where even Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, and even I have no taste, you know? And then we get into third verses of how this is to be done and the verses go on and on and on. So I think something to remember in this first verse is that these are the effects. So the effects of chanting the holy name purely are that all versions of myself, all versions of my ego, all the ideations that I have of the person that I will be, the person that I was, all past lives, all future lives, whatever, all phases of myself are being purified by this holy name. And that to me sounds extremely beautiful. Um, and I want that. <laughs> I hope you all want that too. <laughs> um, but again, we're getting back to this point here of, okay, what are the phases of the self? And what is this self that I am dealing with? Um, a friend, yesterday I was spending some time with, with this friend from uh, the India pilgrimage that I mentioned, and then also Jai Jagannath. I was spending some time with Jai Jagannath and um, this friend from the India pilgrimage. And they asked a really interesting question. It was kind of like, whoa. And they were like, what, what, what is, what has your journey to find the totality of the self been like? I was like, oh, okay. Uh, very nice, easy breezy Sunday question. And um, to not get into it so much, um, both Jai and I had similar responses that before we even reach the totality of the self, like what is what is really the self, you know, as, as from a devotional aspect, we're understanding that soul is an eternal servant of Krishna, right? Jiveda Swarupa Hoy, Krishna Das. Like we, un, we, we, we understand that. We might understand that from a logical perspective, but the actual lived experience of that or the actual realized knowledge of that I can say for myself that I don't understand that. I don't have a lived, realized knowledge. And that's why we look to sadhus, right? They do, right? That's why we look to Srila Prabhupada. They do have a lived, realized understanding of what that is, and they can impart that knowledge to us. But back to the answer that I gave, that Jai was giving, there's this, and I want to speak to this for a little bit, there's this um, fear of the underworld let's call it that yeah fear of the underworld fear of all of the bad stuff all of the yucky stuff all of the um you know things that we don't want to talk about with anyone and i think that this is something that is really ontologically um doesn't make sense because if I am turning towards Krishna, right, then that means I am completely turning towards Krishna with the good and the bad, right? My whole entirety is turning to Krishna. I can't hide anything from Krishna. It's not like, oh, Krishna, this part of myself is going to turn towards you. And this is like the compartmentalized, nice devotee with my, you know, tilak and doti. This is the side that I'm going to turn to. And this side, I'm not going to turn to you, Krishna, you know? It doesn't work that way, actually, because this other side, let's call it our lower self, our demonic nature, our underworld, whatever you want to call it, right? That side, also, the promise here in Shikshastakam is that all phases of the self will be purified by the holy name. 
all versions of myself, good, bad, ugly, you know, beautiful, whatever. And so the question is then, what does that look like for us? What is my, what is my individual surrender of bearing myself to Krishna look like, right? We have, we have the beautiful highest ideal of the gopis who are, you know, standing up with their palms folded completely naked, completely, you know, bearing everything to Krishna. And this brings me to my maybe last point here, because yes, come as you are. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm reading. I haven't been really looking at the comments, but this is one that Jeffrey, I really like. Um, come as you are. And this come as you are point is really beautiful because I think that Okay, I'll I'll say something a little bit about this and then I'll move on to the last part. It's really beautiful because, you know, a lot of the times in religious circles or in spiritual circles or even in our own ISKCON circles, um, you know, and this is just a fact, sometimes there's a, a, a mood of this is how I have to behave. This is how I have to dress. This is, you know, this is the side of myself that I am showing as a good person you know, devotee. And that's fine because of course there are regulations and there and ritual and that's there, you know, it's, it's there for a place. I'm not going to go onto the altar, you know, um, not bathed and wearing jeans. Like that's very clear. Right. Um, and there's a whole process of how I'm going to worship. However, when my spirituality um, and my spiritual practice becomes more about the um, more about form and less about substance, then then I'm in a danger zone. Let's put it that way, right? When it becomes more about form, I am looking the part. I am chanting, right? Because chanting, even I mean, I, I don't want to. I'll speak for myself. Chanting even, you know, it's like I've I've had to really have moments with myself where I'm like, you know what, I am going to try and limit. And I'm not saying that we should or shouldn't or whatever. This is not a judgment for anyone. Please. I'm just speaking about myself. For me, I've told myself I am going to try and limit the amount of time that I chant Japa um, while I'm like walking through the streets of New York. This is something that I've told myself. Because I feel like it's not, I'm not really like connecting so much with Krishna. I'm kind of just like walking around in the subway, like dodging the crazy people of New York. How do Krishna, 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 you know, it's like this. And of course it's beneficial because I'm chanting Krishna's name, but how much am I really absorbed in my relationship with Krishna? And I don't know how I went off into that tangent. Maybe it was something that Jeffrey said, but the come as you are. Oh yes, the come as you are. Something that I really appreciate about the Bhakti Center, and I think the Bhakti Center is such an important space, is that the mood, and this is coming from His Holiness Radhanath Swami, the mood is that we accept you as you are. You know, whether if if you are coming for kirtan once in a blue moon, great. You're you're getting amazing benefit coming to the kirtan. If you want to, you know, just come for a yoga class, wonderful, you know. You're going to hear Krishna's name in that yoga class. So, Hari Bol, you know. If you want to start coming regularly and really learning about bhakti, amazing. You know, that's great. If you want to then leave after that, okay. You know, Hare Krishna. There's no um, mood, or at least there shouldn't be. There's no mood of like uh, judgment or preconceived notion or, you know, you're bad for, you know, doing this or that or whatever. And I think... Now let's move on to this final point here that I was going to make. Ah, yes. I think that this is where devotees um, get a little hung up with the whole like duality, bad, good. I'm a bad devotee. I'm a good devotee. You know, I don't deserve Krishna's love or I do, you know, I'm the best. I'm the best devotee. I was um, in this retreat with Janavi. Um, we were, she was going through um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's Sharanagati prayers. And we were singing, we were singing them. And it was really, really beautiful. Um, but the main, um, the main 
aspect of surrender. For those of us that are unfamiliar with this, there are six aspects of surrender. And the main aspect of surrender is Goptritve Varanam, embracing the Lord's guardianship. Yes, accepting Krishna as my maintainer. And I think that this is something really interesting that we could speak on for a while, but I'm not going to. I'll be I'll be succinct here. Um, because there is a fear or a holding on that is Krishna really going to take care of me? Is Krishna really my maintainer? Can I truly trust Krishna's guardianship, even if it looks you know, chaotic, or even if, you know, this bad thing is happening in my life, can I trust that this is part of Krishna's guardianship? And that's really the, kind of like the last vestige that we're holding on to that I feel unallows us from bearing ourselves completely to Krishna. This is like a thing we're holding on to because it's like, okay, I accept that Krishna is my maintainer in this and that and whatever, but is he going to maintain this? And if I show Krishna, all my bad stuff, or the stuff that I'm working on, or, you know, all the anarthas. And the funny thing is that we think we have to show Krishna. Krishna already knows. Yeah, Krishna knows all the anarthas. He knows everything. But in our in our own limited minds, it's like, oh, I'm not going to show these anarthas to Krishna. <laughs> um, I think there's a fear, or at least the way that I've processed this, you know, a lot of us, not a lot of us, but, you know, some of us in the Western world are coming from like a, 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 a judeo kind of christian upbringing where there's a lot of guilt and shame right if you don't behave well you're going to hell yeah if if you don't do as god says then you know you're not going to heaven like this and so there's this there can be or i've i've sensed this mood of um not showing all our cards to krishna we're kind of keeping them over here yeah, because we're afraid that we're going to get judged by them. We're afraid we're going to get, um, you know, denounced. And in this most beautiful, going back to this, these verses, in this most beautiful um, pastime of the gopis, the gopis feel a little bit of that. They're a little bit like, no, we're not going to do this, Krishna. And Krishna's like, no, you have to. If this is what you wanted, so you know, like this. And then they 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 understand, they realize, okay, yes, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to bear myself to Krishna. And it's almost like we're being asked the same thing, or we're being called to act in the same, in the same way figuratively. Yeah, not literally, figuratively. Um Krishna is asking us, okay, you're attracted to me, you love me, you want to have a relationship with me, then stand up out of the gunk. Yeah, stand up out of the stuff and and show yourself to me. Everything, everything, everything. The good, the bad, you know, all the stuff that you're trying to hide from people. Krishna is the one that can actually hold all of that, right? One of the other aspects of surrender is accepting Krishna as our, our protector. Yeah? Accepting Krishna's guardianship and accepting Krishna's protection. And... One last thing here before, because uh, I do want to hear questions. Um, and I'm sure all of you have much more interesting things to say than me. But, oh yeah, this 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 prayer um, in the Gopritve Varana section of the Sharanagati prayers, I feel like we can all relate to this maybe. His Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he says, deep within, I was always anxious about the maintenance of my wife, children, body, and relatives. How shall I earn money? How shall I attain fame? How will I arrange the marriages of my sons and daughters? Now that I have fully offered myself, I have no more anxiety. You will maintain your household, O oh Lord. You will certainly maintain me, knowing me to be your servant, O oh Lord. In your service, I feel the greatest joy. All activity happens according to your will, O oh Lord. Yet jivas think I do. This is not at all true. What are the jivas able to do if you do not act? 
the jivas can only desire. It is your will alone that comes to pass. Free from all anxiety, I will serve you. Whatever happens in your household, be it good or bad, will not be my responsibility. Completely detached, Bhakti Vinod abandons his independence and serves your feet. I really love this part of the Sharanagati prayers because I feel like we can all relate to that anxiety of living in the material world, right? Like what's going to happen? And how am I going to do this? And, and, and how am I going to make money? And, and what's the job? And am I going to find the, the partner or the wife or the husband? Or am I going to like, remember, you know, like what? Uh. And I really appreciate Bhakti Vinod saying, I have no more anxiety. And that's a really beautiful state, right? I remember when I was living in Ecuador for some time, there's a Prabhu there. His name is Prahlad Narasingha. And um, he was giving a class. He's a older, older disciple of, um, I'm not sure he's not, I don't know if he's a Srila Prabhupada disciple, um, but he's very wise. And he said something that always stuck in my mind. And it, it's kind of annoying, but it's true. And he said, um, worrying, being in a state of worry is an offense to Krishna. And I was like, uh, God, no, because I knew it was so true. I was like, uh, uh. <laughs> and every time I'm in a state of an extreme anxiety, what's going to happen and how am I going to do the thing? I always remember his words because I'm like, you know what? Like, am I really surrendering to Krishna? Like, this is the test. Th these moments are the test. And the reason that this ties into the verse and I'll end now is because first, the first step before I can just bear myself to Krishna entirely is first I have to surrender. Right. We can't go from zero to 100. It's not like I'm over here and now I'm a gopi surrendering myself, you know, completely to Krishna. No, that's not how it works. First, I have to have those internal moments with Krishna where I'm going through the phases of the self, the versions of myself, the versions of my ego. And there are those purifications of each version of myself. And I have to, in each of those moments, embrace the guardianship of Krishna turn more fully to Krishna. Like, you know, it's kind of like in degrees. I'm facing over here, Maya, and I'm in degrees, you know, like a sundial, slowly, slowly, slowly turning to Krishna. And that embracing of Krishna's guardianship, accepting him as my protector. Um, yeah, that's, it's a very interesting process and it's individual for each and every one of us. But um, I'll end there because I feel like I could keep on talking and we only have five minutes and I really, really want to hear from people um, because, um, yeah, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts. Hare Krishna. Uh, Andrea. Hi, Krishna, Kishore Chandra, Das Prabhu. I actually have a very practical question. Uh, that mm. translation that you read was really beautiful. And I also really resonated with a lot of what it said. How do we uh, get a access to that? Like, where would we find that? Um, well, if it's Sridhar Maharaj's translation, I guess you can look online, Sridhar Maharaj Shikshastakam translation, because the way that I have it, is just like Janavi printed um, it out on and I'm a piece of paper. S R I D A R. S R I D H A R. Oh, Sridhar. Sridhar oh. Swami. Swami. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll try googling it. Thank you so much. Of course. There's also a question in the chat. Oh, I didn't see. Let's see. Can't Krishna already see any everything about us? Does, does bearing oneself to Krishna relate to free will? Yes, it does. If so, where is the free will of the gopis in this pastime? Where is the free will of the gopis in this pastime? Um, I feel like that's a trick question. Um, well... They are choosing to bear themselves to Krishna. I don't know. I feel like there's like a deeper purport here and I'm not getting it. 
Krishna already sees everything because he's in the Paramatma. Yes, he's the Paramatma, and therefore he sees everything. Well, okay. Um, I guess my very limited understanding or my very limited answer to this is that if, even though Krishna is Paramatma and he's inside the soul of each and every one of us, we are also um, our, we are also Jiva. And even though Krishna is there, it is our journey um, towards Krishna that he wants. Krishna is not a controller. He doesn't want to control our love towards him. He wants us to freely choose our surrender to him and freely choose our love to him. If Krishna wanted to, he could make us all, you know, just robots and make us fall in love with him, but that's not what he wants. He actually wants individual free will, us choosing to have a relationship with him of love. Um, but yeah, Krishna Daya Prabhu, I feel like you have a lot to say. I want to hear from you. <laughs> I just saw you smiling and nodding, and I was like, I want to know what Krishna Daya is thinking. So I'm calling on you. <laughs> Sorry, you kept me on spot, but I was reflecting on that. Uh, so the gopis were asked to raise their hands and then beg forgiveness from the demigod. So it's their choice. Krishna said you. So, but you know, it's their choice whether to do that or not to do that. They were covering their body. So they voluntarily did that, you know. So as you said, turning towards Krishna, it's still our choice, you know. So Paramatma is seeing already, but whether we want to turn or not, it's our choice. Mm. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, Krishna Jesus wasn't Christ. dragging anybody out of the water. Mm -hmm. And I have a question, Kishore Chandra Prabhu. Maybe Krishna Daya Prabhu can back you up on, on the question. Uh, where were the cowherd boys, Krishna's friends, when this pastime was happening, were they watching? Were they laughing? Did they did he ask them to leave? Because this is a confidential pastime. Because they were with him clearly when he, you know, before this pastimes. I don't know the answer to that question. I feel I feel like intuitively he asked them to leave that they weren't there, but I that's speculation. So I'm not sure. Maybe Krishna Dayaprabhu, you know. Yeah, I'm sure Krishna Daya Prabhu knows. Maybe he was there. I don't know. <laughs> uh, 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 I, I heard something, but exactly. Like, there are some uh, intimate pastimes where Krishna follows the gopis without the gopas. So, so that I heard. But, uh, the footsteps are also marked. So invisibly he follows, and then whenever he's there is a need to manifest, so he manifests there. So with the gopis. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Krishna Daya Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. And just yeah. one more comment because I saw in the question about chanting on the street and how people are able to chant on the street because of the desperation they feel of the material energy in New York. Um, I I, know, I didn't mean to say that one should not chant on the street, and that's why I kept it very personal. If your consciousness is that you can do that, then Hare Krishna. I wish I wish I had that consciousness, but I am so fallen that I I don't have that consciousness. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's because not, I'm a not native everybody New Yorker. as advanced is as advanced as uh, Ananda Manjari. Yeah, you can't I think I'm a native. Like I, I'm a native New Yorker, so I'm very jaded, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, but I think, I think it's the point that I was trying to make was more, where am I insincere in my practices or where in my practices, am I not showing up fully? And that might look different for each and every one of us. And it's more of just that magnifying glass in our own sadhana, like, you know, what, where, where can I do better to have a more full surrender towards Krishna? There she, the is. The there she is. There she is. I want to say uh, thank you for this clarification. I didn't understand it as, as any uh, rules or, or shoulds. And, and also, yeah, it's a beautiful point of clarifying that it is truly so personal. And, and it reminded me of, of this image that I really loved receiving from Chaitanya Charan Prabhu when he compared a mind to a child that we need to parent. And so just like a loving parent, they create nourishment for the child and they also set boundaries and 
because children are so different, our minds are so different. And so it is an art of devotion to actually understand our minds and where we become jaded and where we actually still remain focused. And, and definitely those areas are very different for every single one of us. So thank you for bringing this point. I find it to be very ins instructful. Instructing, sorry. Hare Krishna. Okay, beautiful class, Kishan Chandra Prabhu. And uh, it sparked discussion. So that's a sign of a good class. Thank you. Now is the darshan time. So please turn your cameras on if you can. Come out of the waters. Krishna will take a look. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Have a wonderful day. It's Monday, but don't, don't get upset. <laughs> don't get discouraged. Go out there, bring Krishna with you. Uh, without Krishna, it's a race. If you are racing with Krishna, it's a grace. So without Krishna, it's a race. With Krishna, it's grace. Yeah, I, I, all right. So, <laughs> Hare Krishna. See you again tomorrow. Thank you very much for your participation, for your beautiful smiles, Hare Krishna, and for your beautiful beards, if you have one. Yes, Bhima Prabhu. <laughs>